say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender my will. I surrender my emotions. I surrender my words. I surrender my actions. Because I want you to be glorified. And I really want Satan to be horrified.
he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to, res to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press Toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. I speak victory to the house. It's not tedious for me to stand here working throughout the week and yet stand and give you a word. It is not tedious. But I want to warn you that dogs are being loosed. There are evil workers that have been released. They want to mutilate us and disfigure us. But we know we are to be like Christ. Uh, we are the cleansing. God is cleansing us. And as he cleanses us, we're able to worship him in spirit and in truth. Paul said, if I was one to have confidence, I should have it more than anybody else. Because I've been circumcised. I am from Israel. I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm the Hebrew of Hebrews. But what are those things to me? Everything you might count it a gain, I count it loss for Christ. I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. We count them as rubbish. Uh, that we may be gained, uh, we gain Christ and be found in him. Not having, I'm letting the preacher preach, I'm letting the scripture preach. Woo. Not having my own righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, um, which is from the law, but the righteousness I'm talking about obtaining and attaining is the righteousness that come from God by faith. We are made righteous by faith. Ah, ah, ah. We're going to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. We are being conformed as we speak to his death. Oh, that we may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah. Not that I have already attained or you had already attained or you have, you are perfect or I am perfect. But we go on 
We press on into perfection to the one who is perfect, to the one that is righteous. I do not count myself to have laid hands on this, but one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind. I must release what's behind me and embrace what's before me. I must forget in order to gain. I must release in order to lay hands on. I must be delivered to deliver. I must heal to be healed. I must press on. I don't have nothing else really to tell you right now, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, keep on pressing. Uh-uh, you're going to tell them like you really mean it. Tell them like you really mean it and say, keep on pressing. I know you feel like giving up right now, but keep on pressing. Uh, I know you feel like throwing in the towel, but keep on pressing. I want to tell somebody, don't stop now, but you must keep on pressing. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, keep on pressing. Uh, because God got more for you. Uh, but it's time to forget what's behind us. Uh, no, forget what tried to get you. Uh, forget what got you. Uh, and start to embrace uh, what God has in front of you uh, in order to experience the breakthrough. Uh, we're going to have to release uh, what we were in. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, one thing I do, uh, one thing I must do, uh, and that is uh, forgetting uh, those things uh, which are behind me. Because what's behind me is trying to mess me up. What's behind me is trying to distract me. What's behind me is not what's in front of me. But I want to tell somebody, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your hands in the midst of God's hand. For time. Uh, is filled uh, with swift uh, transition. Uh, I don't know how long uh, we have, uh, but we ain't got as long uh, as we used to have. Uh, but while I am here, uh, God sent me uh, to tell somebody uh, in this house today, uh, don't give up. Ha, breakthrough is coming. Ha, don't give up. Ha, your healing is on the way. Ha, don't give up. Ha, help is on the way. Ha, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Ha, things ain't going ha, like you had planned. Ha, you expected to be a little farther ha, by now. But I want to tell you this, if you keep your hands in the Lord's hands, bring me back where I was. If you keep your hands in the Lord's hands and trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, I'm going to tell you what happens when you lean not but to trust God with not half a heart with not a quarter of your heart with not a partial but I give God my everything I'm yours Lord I hear that old song again I'm yours Lord I'm yours Lord Lord I'm yours everything I am 
everything I'm not, I may not be the world's greatest preacher, but I'm one of God's preachers. I may not have the title prophet, but I know when God speaks, I hear his voice. I just stop by here to tell somebody, keep your hands in the Lord's hands. Keep your focus. Keep your faith. Because the dogs are loose. They can smell your blood type. They can smell your scent. Because you got the scent of a praiser, of a worshiper. The dogs are loose. The hounds are coming. They make a noise. But be not weary in well doing for you shall reap if you faint not faint at your neighbor and say neighbor don't faint now I know it gets a little hot I know stress can take you over I know you can worry yourself literally to death but if you take on the word of God begin to pray the word of God begin to sleep the word of God begin to eat the word of God the word is going to do you not just some good but it's going to do you all good tell your neighbor and say neighbor don't get nervous for what happened for God is getting you ready for greater get ready for greater don't look at your past cause your past will try to handicap you your past will disturb you but if you know like the word says all things all things work together from the good of those who love the law and are called according to his purpose yes yes look at your neighbor and say neighbor you been called by God you have purpose if nothing else God calls you to praise him if nothing else I'm losing everything in this mic God calls you God calls you God calls you to worship him in spirit and in truth look at your neighbor and say neighbor neighbor keep on going keep on pushing keep on going I've been running for Jesus a long time but I ain't got tired yet tell your neighbor say neighbor when you get tired God will give you just take me back where I was it's becoming a distraction now yes look at your neighbor and say neighbor God wants you to know you've been called as a worshiper and a praiser keep on pushing keep on pushing keep on pushing don't give up now I've been running a long time but I ain't tired yet I need you to speak over your own self and say I'm not tired yet Hallelujah. what I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you next is this the dogs have been released because they can smell the blood on you y'all hear me I know I just hooped it but I want to bring it back past your room one more time somebody say one more time the blood, the smell, 
of God's favor is on you. And, and the enemy has released the hounds. But they have no power. They have no power. The hounds may have been released, but they have no power. You are a threat to the enemy. You are a threat to the enemy. The enemy gets nervous because you're starting to realize who God called you to be. The enemy has launched an attack against you because you realize who you are. You realize that you are a child of God. You realize you're not like everybody else. You realize you ain't going to be like everybody else. But now is the time. Don't be discouraged because the hounds are loose. Because God said the water washed your sin. seen the movie where the hounds pick up the scent of who they're chasing and they get right on their heels but the minute they go through the water they lose the scent Y'all, 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 hallelujah, glory to God. I don't know about you, but there has been an attack on my life uh, from the time before I was born to now to try to destroy me. And I, I still, still tapping into some unreserved areas because I don't think this is just it. Y'all ain't going to help me here. You got to realize in your own life, this is not it. This ain't all God called me to be. This ain't all God called me to be. I'm going to say it again. This is not all God called me to be. doctors told my parents abort them. That was the first, that was the first thing. He tried, and before that, he tried to destroy my father uh, before he was born. I believe, I believe there's a cost to the anointing. Y'all ain't going to help me here. And when the enemy knows that you're coming, he'll try to destroy the upline. He'll just try to destroy your grandmother and your grandfather before you get here, not knowing that my father was dropped in the fire, but still survived, still made it, still made it out of a broken home, lived with his stepfather, lived with his mother, didn't have his father around, only to learn and get close to him later on in life. Can I tell you, he still survived the statistics where he should have been the worst thing that walked the face of the earth, but God still had a plan. God had a plan for me. He had a plan for my brother. He had a plan for my sister. And he had a plan for you. I want you to know it doesn't mean, doesn't matter how you got here. Right. Hallelujah. Uh, doesn't matter how you got here. You're here now. Yo, yo, yo. I, I mean, it should not cause you to go away from God. If anything, it should cause you to go further in God. Hallelujah. Everything that's been good that happened to me, God did it. Everything that happened bad, sometimes with Satan and sometimes with myself. But can I tell you this? God had a plan, but the plan is still intact. God hasn't changed his mind regarding what he called you and who he called you to be. God has not change his mind but he wants you to know the dogs have been released I'm just warning the dogs are loose I'm not going to tell you what that preacher said about the gate and the dogs but but I just tell you this God will give you power to close the gate yo 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 I said God will give you power to close the gate He'll cause you to say, I don't care if the dogs came straight from hell. I'll close the gate. God has given you the power. Oh, God has given. When we've been washed in the blood, we went down in the water. Hallelujah. The dogs may try to get our scent. But God said, I'll cause them to back off from you because you're about to become what you need to become. And the enemy is trying to distract you by the bark. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything barking ain't big. All right, all right, all right. Let me, 
I know somebody got that. Everything barking ain't dead. Uh, sometimes the loudest barks come from the smallest dogs. Uh, everything barking in these days uh, are not big as they seem. Uh, but I want you to know uh, uh, God doesn't want you to fear. Uh, God doesn't want you to be intimidated uh, by Satan and his devices. Uh, but you're going to have to stand in what you know and who you know. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, we got to go from here. Uh, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, beware of the dogs oh they're coming but they won't destroy you yeah they might bark at you they might try to bite you but God is giving you power over the dogs oh yeah Paul said I'll have to lose some stuff I'm going very quick through here I said the scripture's going to do the preaching I'm just ad living right now hallelujah glory to God but you're going to have to lose some stuff Paul said, I count it all for Christ. It's loss, but it's for Christ. Sometimes we're going to have to lose some things in order to win the race. Sometimes we quote the scripture where it says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And most of the time when we read that scripture, we didn't know historical background. We thought the eye of a needle uh, was that thing you sew with. Uh -huh. We thought that uh, that sewing needle uh, and that has an eye. Uh, but this was uh, a sheep gate. Uh, this was a small gate in Jerusalem. Uh, and it was called the eye of the needle. Uh, and when it got dark, they would have to close the city gates. Uh, so if you wanted to enter in the city, uh, you have to take the items off of the camel. Uh, leaving them behind and entering into the city. I understand that's what the true meaning was, that you're going to have to lose some stuff. So what? how does that compare to a rich man? Sometimes the rich man don't want to let things go because they acquire things and think, things is what's going to get them huh? and what they do to get them huh? to God. Huh? But there are some things we got to lose. Huh? We have to lose pride. Huh? We have to lose arrogance. Huh? We have to lose huh? our knowledge that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Huh? We got to lose all that. Huh? How can I be saved huh? if I'm losing? Huh? How can I be saved huh? if I'm taking stuff off? Huh? How can God use me? Huh? And he's stripping me away, huh? stripping things away from me. Huh? But the Bible tells us huh? with men huh? it is impossible, huh? but not with God. Huh? For with God, huh? all things huh? are possible. Huh? Look at your neighbor huh? and say, neighbor, huh? you may have to lose in a season, huh? but God huh? is going to take you huh? to a season huh? of anger to prayers. Uh, yes, uh, somebody uh, is getting ready uh, to experience uh, a season uh, of great change. Uh, you thought it wasn't going to happen, uh, but now here it comes. Uh, you have built uh, yourself to God, uh, and now God uh, is letting you know uh, I'm answering your prayers because uh, you trusted me. When I said nothing to you, you trusted me. When nobody prophesied to you, you trusted me. When nobody laid hands on you, can you trust him in a season when there's no word hitting you? Can you trust him until he speaks? Yes, yes. Look at your neighbor. Uh, and said, get ready. Uh, you went through the suffering. Uh, you went through the trials. Uh, you went through the tribulation. Uh, but now uh, you have uh, survived. Uh, look at your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, I survived it. Uh, 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 I survived it. Uh, it's in the past now. Uh, I survived uh, divorce. Uh, I survived separation. I survived death. I survived.
I survived sickness. I survived health challenges. I survived my own identity crisis. I survived. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I survived it. You got to say it like you really mean it. Say, I survived it. Ha, survive that. Ha, some of you need to say it right now because you need to declare it. Ha, those things ha, that are not ha, as if they were. Ha, say, I survive that. Ha. Paul said, I haven't attained it, nor am I perfect. And I'm closing here. But let us go on unto perfection. We're going on into perfection. Let us stand. Hallelujah. We're pressing toward the mark the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11 says the race was not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong. Matthew 10 22 said but he who endures the end will be saved. We shall be saved. you just to tell someone around you said the breakthrough is coming but you're going to have to lose some stuff I, it ain't no shout right there but if it means gaining a closer walk with Christ then I'm all for losing that's when you know you're still winning when you can lose and know it has a greater cause. We're not going to win every battle. But we sure can look at losing in a different light. The truth is, you wouldn't have the wisdom you have had it not been for some struggles and trials in your life. Did it have to take that to get you to this place? No, it didn't. But since you wouldn't pray when it was convenient, or you only prayed because it was convenient, you only talked to God when it felt good, sometimes we were not in the place because we didn't avail ourselves to God and submit and yield. Prayer causes us to yield to God. Prayer causes us to yield and submit to it. It's not even consecration. Even as we went through three days of consecration, that consecration wasn't convenient. But neither were the results of it. <laughs> not convenient for the enemy. God had give us the upper hand. God to give us the wisdom. I'm going to share this. I'm going to let you go. If we stay in God's face long enough, God to give us strategies to win. I'm going to say it again. If we stay in God's face long enough, God will give us strategies to win. There's some things that only come through fasting or praying and fasting, as the word says. Prayer and fasting, speaking to God, yielding ourselves, and fasting causes us to be in alignment. 
what God is doing, and he will show us what his plans are. But if he can't trust you in prayer, how he's going to trust you with plans? If God can't trust you to go in prayer with him, why would he reveal the greatest things? Because you're going to forget about them anyway. But if you spend time in his presence, take, I'm like David, take not your spirit away from me. I want to be in his presence. Creating me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. I want to be in that place that I'll never forget who God is. And if he showed me a fresh revelation, I promise you, I'll have a fresh praise. If you stay in the presence of God and embrace his forgiveness, I challenge you, you won't even need pumping to praise him. You won't need a cheerleader to remind you. Your mind will serve as the biggest cheerleader saying, remember what God did for you? Remember how he forgave you? Remember how he healed you? Remember what he did for your family? Remember what he's doing in your life? Almost instantaneously, you get so excited, your hand is already up. Nobody will. God, let, let me, let me. Now, I'm going to just share this. I promise you, you're going to need this. David would tell us, he would command the people, praise ye the Lord. That was a command. So when we get up and say praise the Lord, we commanded a praise, not a response. But praise the Lord. There should be a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the one thing we're not going to do is beg you to praise God. Because if we have to beg you to praise God, God don't want that praise anyway. If you stingy with, his, with your praise, don't you, ex, don't you expect the Lord to come on up and show up? You, you, you can't even open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. God doesn't want a, a manipulated praise. We have enough puppet masters in the world and in the church. God wants somebody that's going to worship him in spirit and in truth. That when you praise him, you don't, we can encourage you. We can command a praise, but it don't have to be forced. If I said right now, clap your hands, all you people, you would begin to clap because I asked you. But what if I asked you to clap because God has been good to you? Saints, I just want to encourage you to keep on going. Keep on pushing. Keep on pressing. Keep on pressing and pressing into his presence. In private. That way publicly won't be a problem. Praise God. Thank God for the word. Thank you, Jesus. sick among us. There, there, there's sickness going around and it's traveling. We're going to pray for that in a moment. If there are anyone that desires prayer, we'll pray for you. We'll pray with you. If there's one, come step forward. We'll pray for the sister back from here. But if there are any others, if any others, baby Lisa, were you coming for prayer or were you about to send you on the side. <laughs> Praise God. Let me share with you what the Lord showed me in private. As I was going out through this week, quickly my spirit, how God's going to move me in you. In you. And I know 
we don't all always, but I see you coming onto the forefront of this world. I, I pray that you would hear God's prayer for us this morning. You are- 